please definitely have access to a blanket and a strap, maybe two blocks, um, but not, not, not mandatory. Let me just make sure how are we doing here. I think I've got to mute again. All right, we're squared away. We're squared away. Once you got your stuff, blanket, strap, maybe blocks, come down onto your back. Bend your knees, place the feet onto the mat, wiggle them out wide. Take your arms out into a big T-shape or maybe let them drape overhead. And then start to flop the knees Drop the knees from side to side. Lengthen your inhales, lengthen your exhales. And then drop the knees over to the right. Bring the left arm up and overhead. Place your right hand onto your belly and take three full cycles of breath. Fullest breath in and fullest breath out. At the end of your third exhalation, change sides, bring the knees through center, drop them to the left, bring the right arm up and overhead, and then place the left hand onto the belly, take three cycles of breath. Make your breaths long, even, smooth. And then after your third round of breath, bring the knees back up, wrap your arms around the knees, draw them gently towards your chest. Spend a moment here sensing into the low back. And then take a breath in, puff your belly up towards your thighs. And then exhale, gently draw the knees in closer to your chest. Inhale, fill up, fill the belly, fill the chest. And then empty the breath out, squeeze the knees in. One more time, fullest breath in, belly, low back chest and behind the shoulder blades, which is to say front and back. And then open the mouth and wring the breath out. <sighs> Unwrap the hands, free the legs, and then extend them long down the mat. I don't know why I've placed my blocks as perfect obstacles. Um, stretch the body out long and then walk your feet over to the lower right hand corner of the mat and then to bring your arms up and overhead and take the hands towards the upper right hand corner of your mat if this is feeling like a, a a groovy place to stay then please do that if you would like to experiment with um uh kind of hooking into yourself then you could cross the left ankle over the right ankle and catch a hold of the left wrist. Take a couple more full smooth breaths here and imagine drawing the breath 
all the way into that left side of the body. So from the outer left ankle bone, all the way up the leg through the hip, torso, rib cage, armpit, shoulder, arm, you know, you know what the body's made of, all those parts, fill that with breath. And if you like, you could even experiment with what it's like to become a little bit more active in the shape and then a little more passive. So what does it feel like to, to really just soften in? And what does it feel like to activate your musculature and actively stretch into this crescent moon shape? After you've done that a couple times, take one more full breath in, into the left side of the body. And then exhale, walk the hands back to the center of the mat, the feet back to the center of the mat. Take a full breath in here and observe any differences in sensation on the two sides of the torso. And then walk your body parts over to the left now. Feet to the lower left, hands, arms to the upper left. Maybe hook one ankle over the other and grab a wrist, only your own. Focus the breath into now that right side expanse of the body. as though your curved body were like the sail on a sailboat. Can you draw the breath in and make that sail billow out even more? And what's it like to be active and reach and stretch? What's it like to be passive and let the shape and gravity and time be the force. And take a full breath into the right side. And then exhale, walk the arms, the legs back to the center of your mat. Take another breath in here and observe the two sides of the waist and the rib cage. Bend your knees. Draw your knees in towards your chest. Drop the knees over to the left. Open the right arm out to the side. And because we do have um, props today, you could bring in a blanket or maybe even a block to support the legs. So a prop here can serve to communicate, um, to communicate safety and support to the body and the nervous system. So you don't have, for instance, a shoulder just kind of dangling loose in the breeze. Instead, elevate the legs so that the shoulder can find the floor and the body can just soften into the shape a little bit more instead of holding on to any tension. Take a couple more full breaths, please. For the last few moments you're here with your right hand, make a soft fist and then give that IT band a little bit of a bop. So a little soft fist tap from the glute all the way down the side of the leg. You can look up and see what you're doing. You can let the head rest. We will work with the iliotibial band today which, as the name suggests, goes from the ilium, so your hip, all the way down to the tibia, which is the larger of your two lower leg slash shin bones. 
and here we are doing uh, some tapping to uh, to knock a little bit of a little bit of life force, a little bit of chi in, and also encourage some um, some fluid exchange. So encourage some hydration in this thick band of connective tissue, which can um, become a little bit sticky. Pause your bopping. Take a breath. And then exhale, change sides. And notice how the body lands on the second side. If the left shoulder is rising up away from the mat, then you could bring in a prop, even multiple props. Sometimes it's nice to throw a blanket on top of a block for softness. Slide it under the knees and take some full, smooth breaths in your twist. And then with your left hand, make a soft fist and do some gentle tapping, knocking of the IT band. So the IT band, sometimes we're like, oh my gosh, my IT band is so tight. And yeah, that may be true, but in your head, can you imagine a loose IT band? <laughs> you, just, you just fall all the way apart. Like our, our T bands, I like to think of them sometimes as being bookends, you know, so if books are just asked to uh, stand up on their own in the center of a, of a shelf, um, you know, they can sometimes do a pretty good job of keeping themselves up, but sometimes they kind of get, uh, kind of fall all over the place. Um, so we bring in the bookends to, uh, to bring in some strength, some containment. So the next time you're thinking, oh my gosh, IT band, so tight, um, maybe choose like a flat pattern like, wow, and that's so much better than the alternative of falling out of my body uh, like pudding. Pause your wrapping and knocking, take another full breath in. And then exhale, roll over onto your side and make your way up onto hands and knees. Slide a blanket under the kneecaps, place your hands under your shoulders, knees under the hips, and then take a few cycles of cat cow, inhaling to arch and exhaling to dome and round inward. Inhale, lift the crown of the head, lift the tailbone, ease the belly down. And exhale, round in, empty the breath out. Link the pace of the movement to the pace of your breath. Either take a few more cycles of cat-cow or do some noodling about, some scribbling with the body. Explore sensation. If you're not quite sure what to do, your body's feeling like, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do today. Just make a move in any direction, any move in any direction, and just see what kind of sensation arises and where do you get curious about next? Take a few more cycles of breath, either with cat-cow or with creative exploration. And 
Make your way to hands and knees. Tuck your toes, press into your hands, lift your knees, lift your hips up, reach the hips back. And here you can experiment with all kinds of shapes, all kinds of directions. So you could turn your downward facing dog into something more of an open angle by walking the hands and the feet farther from each other. You could experiment with making it a more closed angle towards an acute angle. You can explore your lateral directions. And then make your way into a downward facing dog that feels pretty solid to you today. So press down firmly into your hands, reach the sitting bones back towards the wall behind you. Knees can be bent any amount. Connect with your breath. And then exaggerate your breath. Inhale, lower the knees to the mat. Exhale to child's pose. Inhale forward to hands and knees. Exhale, downward facing dog. Either keep going with that sequence of movements if that feels appropriate to you today. If it feels more appropriate to choose one of these shapes, then please do that. Um, and if none of them are feeling really optimal to you today, then choose to do whatever the heck you want for the next few moments, whether it's cat-cow. Um, I'm not going to try to guess what you want to do. <laughs> you know that. Wherever you are right now, please make your way towards a downward facing dog. And then step your feet to the edges of your mat. Bend your knees generously. Walk your hands in towards your feet and then drape the upper body over your legs. Relax your face, your cheek, your jaw, your other cheek, your tongue, your eyes and your eyebrows. You could choose stillness here or some gentle movement. Knees bent any amount. Bring your hands to your shins and inhale. Reach the crown of your head forward away from your tailbone. Exhale, fold inward. Knees bent any amount. Inhale, halfway lift. Lengthen out. Exhale, fold forward. One more time, lift halfway, take your fullest breath in, broaden the lungs. And then fold forward, empty out.
spread your toes wide, put a little bend into the knees, reach your arms out to the sides, press into your feet, and on an inhale, stand all the way up, reach up. Exhale, hands together in prayer position. Release your hands, step the feet in close to each other, and then step the right foot behind the left foot. So, crossing of the legs. Inhale, reach the right arm up. And then exhale, side bend to the left any amount. Press down actively into the right foot, which might take your brain a little moment to figure out which is which currently. Take a breath in, reach through the right arm, press down into the right foot. And then exhale, come back up, lower the right arm, drop your chin down towards your chest, let your arms and shoulders be heavy, and then roll all the way down. Roll down to a forward fold, any amount. Knees can, can bend as you go. Once you are forward folding as much as you care to go, um, sweep the upper body towards the left, so towards the outer left leg, so you're looking more at that right foot, which is the one that's behind. And then keeping that askew orientation, roll all the way back up to standing. Yes, this is a balance challenge also. And then ripple yourself back to center once the upper body is up. Step the feet apart with a wide stance, hands to your hips, couple hip circles. Spiral back to center. Step the feet in towards each other and then cross the left leg behind the right leg. Release the arms, inhale, reach the left arm up. And then exhale, arc over towards the right. Press down into your back foot, which is now the left foot. Reach through the fingertips. Direct a few breaths into the space between the hip, into the rib, the rib cage, and the armpit. Inhale, reach, press down into that foot, and then exhale, come back up. Drop the chin down toward your chest and roll vertebra by vertebra down towards a forward fold, like your fingertips are magnetized towards the center of the earth. Bend the knees as you go. If, they have a, if they're wanting to, um, to lock out, then counter that with a little bend. Once you're in your forward fold, shift the upper body towards the right. And then keeping it in that or orientation more or less, roll all the way back up the spine. And once you're upright, swirl back to center. Step the feet out to a wider stance, perhaps onto the edges of your mat. And then do some hip circles. Check out which direction you're going now. If it feels quite familiar, like maybe this is the direction you just went in, then just whoop, swivel on in the opposite direction. And 
then swirl the tailbone back to center. Step to the top of your mat. Place your feet at hip distance. Inhale, chair pose, sit the hips back, reach the arms forward. Exhale, fold forward towards the blocks or towards the floor. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen out. Exhale, fold inward. Stamp your right foot down, step the left foot back, and then place the back knee down. Sweep the arms up with an in-breath, and ease the hips down any amount. Inhale, reach up, lift the breastbone up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, take your hands back towards the floor, the mat, or your blocks. Tuck the back toes under, lift the back knee up, and then step it in to meet the front foot. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, press into the feet, stand all the way up, bring your hands together to prayer. Inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, dive forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. I think we skipped a chair pose. I hope you won't miss it. Maybe we'll make up for it. Press the left foot down. Step the right foot back. Place the back knee down. And then ease the hips. Reach the arms up. You could think about shifting the tailbone forward or lowering the pelvis down towards the mat. Connect with your breath, soften your jaw, soften your tongue. Inhale, reach the fingertips up, reach your breastbone up, lift it. And then exhale, take your hands down towards the mat. And make your way back towards a plank pose. That could be a plank pose with the knees down, with the knees up. And as with everything we do, it could also be a child's pose. With knees up or down, lower yourself down onto your belly with control. Once the body is down, untuck the toes, reach the legs out long behind you, inhale, cobra, reach the breastbone forward through your shoulders. Exhale, lower down. Peel back towards downward facing dog. Inhale, lift the heels, look forward. Exhale, make your way towards the top of your mat. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sit back, chair. Exhale, stand up, hands to prayer.
now is a moment when, if you would like to have access to a little bit more stability, a piece of furniture nearby, a wall could be nice to have nearby. So um, you can m move yourself within your space to make those things happen or stay on the mat. Inhale, chair pose. Bring your hands together in front of your heart. Shift more weight now onto your right foot. Lift the left foot up and then cross the left ankle onto the right thigh and then sit back into Temple Dancer. Might be nice to hang out with some, uh, some stability. That's one option. Other option is to remain with hands together in front of your heart. If you have blocks nearby, you could bring them in front of you and even fold forward over the legs. Take one more full breath in your Temple Dancer Pose. And then exhale, begin to transition towards a Crescent Lunge Pose. So maybe this is one smooth movement. Maybe it's a couple steps to get the left foot, left leg back behind you, and then come into a Crescent Lunge. Bring your hands together to prayer. Spin the back heel down, pivot on your feet. So now you are towards a temple pose. Knees bent, angle the toes out, heels in, sit down. Connect with your breath. If the low back feels, <clears throat> excuse me, cramped up here, um, you could create some more space by leaning the upper body, upper body forward and then guiding the tailbone gently under. Bring in full, smooth breaths. Lift the right heel up. Lift the left heel up. Right heel down. Left heel down. Left heel up, right heel up, left heel down, right heel down. Press into the feet, stand all the way up. Turn the toes to face forward, maybe even slightly angled in or the heels angled out. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward any amount. If you have a block and reach here, maybe you reach for the block. Walk your hands towards the right foot. Walk your hands through center and then over towards the left foot. Put a bend into your left knee. Keep walking the hands towards the left. Spivot, that's a spiral and pivot together onto your feet so that the left foot is in back. Right, nope, that's the opposite. Left leg in front, right leg back, bend the front knee, come all the way up to crescent lunge. Take a breath in, reach up, and then exhale hands down towards the mat and step the back foot in. 
Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. Exhale, stand, hands to prayer. So now you are facing what was once the back of your mat. We're gonna set temp Temple Dancer up on this side. So if you are using props, just take it, just, just break scene and take a moment to gather your props. Bring them where they're useful to you. That includes wall or furniture. And then stand with your feet hip distance apart. Inhale, chair. Bring the hands together to prayer. Pour more weight now onto your left foot. And then lift the right foot up and place right ankle on left thigh. Flex the right foot. Maybe you're using something for balance. If you have blocks, then use those to guide you towards a, or support you in a forward fold over the legs. Inhale in your temple dancer pose. And then exhale, begin to transition towards a crescent lunge, however that makes sense to happen in your body. Inhale, reach your fingertips up, lift your breastbone up. And then exhale, bring the hands to prayer, spin the right heel down, bend the right knee, and then swivel the feet into temple pose, bend the knees, curl the tailbone under. Connect with your breath, make it full, make it smooth and even. Do a couple rounds of our prancy ankle dance. So lift the right heel up, left up, right down, left down, left up, right up, left down, right down, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, right, left, right. Press into the feet, stand up. Turn the toes forward, inhale, reach up. And exhale, fold forward, maybe towards the floor, maybe towards the block. Walk your hands to the right, bend the right knee, pivot on the feet, and then make your way back to plank. And again, this plank could be with the knees up, with the knees down, with the forearms down, or it could also be a child's pose. Knees up or down, ease yourself onto the mat. Untuck the toes, inhale, reach the breastbone forward and also up into cobra. And then exhale, lower down. Child's pose.
Walk your hands in towards your knees. Come on up and then bring your legs out in front of you. If you've got a blanket and you want to use it, fold it up, put it under your sitting bones. This serves the function of allowing the uh, spine to sit a little bit more easeful and upright rather than feeling um, slumpy like mine tends to do. And then bring the soles of the feet together. If you would like, you could support yourself with your fingertips on the earth. If that's feeling quite far, you could bring the blocks into play to support you. You could also place your hands anywhere on your legs. But now with the feet touching, press the feet down into the mat. So that blade edge side of your foot that's making contact with the floor, press it down. And at first you might not notice much except that your <laughs> shoulders shoot up to your ears and your jaw <laughs> clenches tight. Um, but please relax the shoulders, relax the jaw, and keep maintaining the effort and the energy of pressing the feet down. So we've already done a, a fair amount of IT band stretching today. This is a little bit of IT band strengthening. So a little isometric challenge, asking the IT band to, um, to contract and be reminded of what it does best. Take a full breath in, press down. And then exhale, soften, release that effort, and then fold forward over your legs any amount. Take your hands over towards the right in your forward fold. Take a full breath in towards the left side of your low back. And then take your hands through center and over to the left. Any amount, let the sensations that you find be the guide for where you place the hands. Take a full breath in towards the right side of the low back. And then walk your hands to center. Spend a couple more cycles of breath in your forward fold. And since we're here and we, we have such perfect access to the insides of our feet, you can even take a time to do some pressing into the arches of your feet. Press or slide and glide. The inner arches of the feet um, are connected to our, uh, our vagus nerve. Um, and we know from, or I won't say we know, but polyvagal um, theory tells us or suggests that we can adapt the vagus nerve towards um, stress responses or towards relaxation responses. And things like longer exhalations and soothing touch help to adapt the vagus nerve towards that um, ease, more easeful and resilient response. Take another full breath in. And a full breath out. Walk your hands in. Bring yourself upright. 
and then place the soles of the feet onto the mat. I'm going to swivel myself around and then roll all the way down onto your back. Take a moment to allow the spine to move back towards a neutral position after spending a fair amount of time in a flexed and forward position. Bend the knees, place your feet under your knees at about hip distance apart. The arms can be wherever you'd like, wherever they feel supportive and helpful. So maybe down by your sides or out to the sides. Like wings, press down into your feet and lift the hips up. And here in your bridge pose, spread the toes again and actively connect the soles of your feet with the mat, which is to say press them down. And now with your muscular effort, gently draw the legs in towards each other, just a, a suggestion of adduction towards the midline of the body. And then also ease the inner legs, the inner thighs down towards the floor. So like you could just melt the inner part of the leg down towards the mat. Inhale here. And then exhale, lower down. Find your strap or your, your lasso. And then starting with both knees bent, put the lasso around your right foot and then reach the foot up towards the ceiling any amount, knee bend any amount. So here we're not going to do a whole lot of um, hamstring stuff necessarily. So no need to, uh, to wrench into the knee. Not that there would ever be a need to wrench into the knee, but definitely not now. And then take both ends of the strap into your left hand and then guide the leg across your body. So across the pelvis towards the, um, the prominence of the left hip bone. And here, if you'd like, you could experiment with stretching the left leg out long down the mat. Connect with your breath. And from here, there are various options. You could stay here with both sides of the pelvis um, pretty much anchored onto the floor and just a look, look for a sense of stretch across the outer leg. You could also turn the body towards the left more, draw the left leg, or sorry, the right leg across the body more towards a, a, a twist. And if you do have blocks, you can bring the blocks in to support this. So that could mean putting a block down and then letting the leg rest on the block. Um, another option is to not have the leg straight. That's kind of a lot. You could bend the knee. You could rest the knee onto the block.
if it feels like more stretch wants to happen on this IT band in the hip, then you could cross the leg over the body even more. For some folks, that feels absolutely blissful. For me, this absolutely aggravates my SI joint. So um, please take care of your body and make good choices for yourself, supporting yourself whenever you can. And if the one leg thing just didn't do it for you, then two leg recline twist. Wondering if the mic picked up all that belly noise that just happened. Take a full breath in. And then as you exhale, come out of the shape and draw your knees in towards your chest. Place the feet down with the knees bent and now hook the lasso, the strap, the whatever onto your left foot. Reach the foot towards the ceiling. Knee bent any amount. Take the two ends of the strap into your right hand and then cross the leg over the pelvis. And it usually follows that having the, uh, the leg farther away is gonna be a little bit, uh, a little bit gentler and drawing the leg in closer towards you has the potential for some more sensation. So again, please make appropriate choices for yourself right now. Let's begin to explore and build into our options, which include extending the right leg down the mat. They include taking the left leg more across the body, perhaps even all the way into a twist. I've got a piece of furniture here. So you make use of your own space. That could be with the leg extended towards straight, or that could be with the knee bent, maybe supported onto a prop. And then, of course, you're welcome to adjust the height of that prop or maybe even take it out of the mix entirely or replace the prop with another one of your legs. Take a breath. Exhale, make your way onto your back. Draw the knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little gentle rock from side to side. And then pause, take a full breath in, filling the belly and the chest and the back body well as the sides of the waist. And then exhale, release a hold of your knees and extend yourself into a pose of final relaxation, which you are also welcome to customize, perhaps by incorporating a, a prop or a piece of furniture, or maybe keeping the knees bent and in towards each other and draping your arms over yourself.
Soften your tongue and allow it to fall away from the roof of your mouth. And relax your tongue all the way down to its root, which occurs around the, the middle of the throat. Relax your hands and your feet. Relax your brow and the space between your eyebrows. Soften your belly a little bit more. Start to take some fuller breaths. Fill your body with breath. Fill the space around you with breath. And make some gestures of awakening now with the body, maybe wiggling the fingers and the toes or opening and closing the hands. And then bend your knees, roll over onto your side. And as you're ready, Bring yourself up into a seated position. Maybe that's on the mat. Maybe that's in a chair. Bring your hands together in front of your heart and rub the hands together vigorously. Place one hand onto your heart, the other onto your belly. And offer yourself a gesture of support. Thank you. <laughs>